OK. Good evening, dear colleagues. Uh, my name is Zaid Bqa'in. I'm the Dean of Hamdan bin Muhammad College of Dental Medicine at Muhammad bin Rashid University of Medicine and Health Sciences and Deputy Vice Chancellor for International Affairs. Today, we are broadcasting our first webinar. And I would like to briefly introduce the university. Currently, we have three colleges offering a Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery in the College of Medicine and five postgraduate master's degree in dentistry. Also, we are starting in September two master's program in the College of Nursing and Midwifery. And in the College of Medicine, we're starting the Master's of Sciences in Biomedical Sciences. And in dentistry, we're starting a dental internship program. In the future, we will have more programs in nursing and midwifery, and we will have a master's program in the College of Pharmacy, in addition to PhD in Biomedical Sciences. Today, I will be presenting my colleague, Dr. Anas Salami, who is a lecturer and specialist in pediatric dentistry at Hamdan bin Muhammad College of Dental Medicine. He is also a member of the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh. He has published several articles and published his first book, and currently he's pursuing his PhD in Queen's University, Belfast. Allow me to introduce Dr. Anas, and I hope that you will enjoy uh, his talk. He will be talking uh, about uh, 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 silver diamond fluoride, a silver renaissance in dentistry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Uh, Zaid, uh, for your kind introduction. So, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you, everyone. Good evening. I uh, hope everyone is doing really well in this uh, COVID-19 uh, situation and hopefully everyone is staying home and safe. I really miss my colleagues and friends, so hopefully by uh, having this uh, uh, lecture we will try somehow to uh, meet each other. So yeah, so today we'll be talking about the uh, silver uh, diamond uh, fluoride, which is uh, it's not really new in dentistry, but it's a renaissance uh, in dentistry. So uh, to start with, sorry, let us let me click. Yeah. So to start with, uh, let's talk about where are we now as if in a dentistry or uh, for as if for pediatric dentistry. Uh, we have now everything is now developed. We have CBCTs. We have. Uh, general anesthesia options, we have sedation option, uh, for instance, in pediatric dentistry, and uh, uh, we have fantastic restorations, crowns. So basically, we are dealing with the kids, not as uh, looking at their teeth, we are looking at their well being, and we are looking at the kids as being as a kid, so as a child. So uh, we do consider the psychological the psychological impact uh, of uh, this uh, dental caries on them. And as we know, the dental caries is uh, one of the the highest prevalent uh, chronic disease worldwide. It's affecting around 2.5 billion of people. Uh, hopefully, we can stop it if we don't get jobless. But we try to reduce the negative impact of that on their lifestyle. And uh, we have we can have now more kind of easy procedures, more child friendly procedures uh, like whole technique. We will uh, go through it briefly. Uh, so basically we are now our hands are open. Our uh, uh, toolbox is full. We have all the armamentarium of uh, doing a research. Uh, so uh, do, sorry for doing the treatment. Uh, we are mixed with the research and every day. So yeah. So basically our hands is open. But now, what to choose and what's the best uh, technique or material to be used for each child? Uh, it's a challenge, actually. Uh, and so everything is available. Now it comes to the decision of to choose the best material for each uh, patient. 
Uh, for us, as a pediatric dentist, we face with some challenges when we really deal with the uh, children and kids or adolescents even. Uh, some of them, they are pre-cooperative. That means that they are too young to accept a dental treatment. Uh, they are uh, less easier than less than two or three years, which uh, cognitively they are not developed uh, well to understand the procedure and to accept the procedure. So we call them as a pre-cooperative that's a challenge for us uh, when we see this kind of patients. Uh, another challenge is when we have a patient who is uncooperative. That means they are not accepting the treatments or they have uh, dental phobia or anything that uh, let them uh, make them uh, avoid uh, have receiving a proper uh, treatment. Uh, other uh, kind of patients that we see, it's children, adults, and sometimes down to the adulthood, is a special needs patient. This patient, they require a special, a special care. Uh, and sometimes it is hard because of their physical or cognitive uh, uh, properties. Uh, so we faced really challenges. It used to be in some cases, uh, they you go with the clinical holding. Clinical holding means that you, uh, I mean, the, if I you be frankly speaking, it's a restraint. So you keep the child hold the child and make them accept the treatment uh, against their their will and the which is not appropriate and we don't do and like maybe I have done once 10 years back or I haven't really done any new we don't do any of these kind of uh, treatments for any kind of child uh, neither us nor the parents they accept having this kind of treatment for their kids the other alternative which we used to, pro which we are providing to these patients is uh, general anesthesia, which you keep the patient uh, to go to the deep sleep and on the general anesthesia patient is sleeping and we do a, a complete oral rehabilitation core on the general anesthesia. Uh, that is uh, frequently we do it, but uh, fortunately we have now less number of the cases that we have to do it under general anesthesia. So the procedure that we do under general anesthesia is number is reduced. Why is that? We'll come to the to that answer right, just soon. But keep in your mind that uh, general anesthesia is not really accepted by some uh, most by most of the parents uh, actually. Uh, because why? Because they found that it has a long term neurocognitive impairment in the immature brain, if it's either like if, if for a child less than three or two years, they found that they had some effect in their uh, neurocognitive. So uh, with this, having this information, the social media and everywhere, it is quite now uh, challenging for us to convince the, pa the uh, parents to have their child uh, under general anesthesia. Uh, the other thing is that uh, obstacles in our, for us uh, in general under general anesthesia is that uh, raising costs. So general anesthesia is not cheap and uh, I, I know that in the uh, uh, countries like UK or US it might be free if it's done under NHS but here in our we have the a lot of uh, private hospitals and clinic like in our Dubai Dental Hospital it's a private so uh, the cost is quite high for the parents to afford the general anesthesia with the full full cost of the dental treatment for their kids. So uh, what would be the possible then? If you have these children and you had only two options, which was the clinical holding, which is not accepted uh, for both of us, uh, parents and the practitioners, and general anesthesia, uh, sometimes it's not possible to have it. So what to do now? What, what, I mean, what will be the best treatment option to provide to the child? Uh, here you can see the newsletter uh, that was published in the CBS uh, News. It says that the Hawaii investigating dentist after three year old child girl death. So that was the, the child was doing a dental treatment uh, under the general anesthesia and uh, she passed away uh, sadly. Uh, so it was in the news. Everyone was reading the news and many patients or parents come now and they remember this uh, news that was uh, everywhere. So they have it in their mind and they come and they say that, oh, I don't want to take my child to general anesthesia. So uh, now with the advancements, 
of the the material uh, that we use and knowing the uh, the pathophysiology of the dental caries and the dental plot, uh, we are using now, which was unconventional to do these treatments uh, uh, like a few decades back, but it's now very common nowadays, which is minimally intensive dentistry, MID, and biological approach, uh, which we try to be as minimal as possible, with, and we provide as high effective treatment to the, uh, the children. So in minimal in invasive, invasive dentistry, we're providing treatments such as like uh, by minimal uh, caries removal and doing a sort of temporary restoration, GIC, and the biological approach, as you, I'm sure that most of you heard about the whole technique, uh, which you stop uh, the, uh, the caries by putting a crown with the GIC cement uh, on top without doing any preparation. So that's very child-friendly treatment. Parents, they accept it. Children, they accept it. They find it very uh, child-friendly uh, because we are not using any drilling. We are not using any local anesthesia. It's very quick and uh, painless, minimal pain. If I don't want to say painless, so they might feel some pressure, but it's very child friendly treatment that we have these options nowadays uh, in our hand. And in our hospital, in Dubai Dental Hospital, which is part of the Mohammed Bin Rashid University, MBRU, uh, the statistics now shows that the number of general anesthesia that we are providing it's much much less nowadays uh, we used to have more frequent when we didn't have uh, these uh, options uh, or with evidence actually I can say we didn't have a strong evidence for this uh, treatment options to be used but now since we have the evidence and we are working always at an evidence-based dentistry so since we have these options with an evidence so we have reduced the number of general anesthesia cases in our hospital. So uh, one of these karyostatic restoration was uh, you place a GIC, which is uh, called the, in this uh, ART a type of the restorations. It was really quick. It removed some superficial case and put a GIC. But it, if it was if it gets used a lot, it doesn't have high success rate. So we should not keep it as using as routine dental, treat, dental treatment that uh, we provide to the patients. Uh, it's one of the options, but since GIC has, does not have a long uh, retention rate, it's not really uh, uh, advised. Actually, so it's not really advised if you have a multi-surface restoration. So a new biologic approach, as you can see in this case, there are minimal caries or minimal to moderate caries on the upper ease or some, some interdental uh, between the E upper ease and D's. And in the lower teeth, you can see minimal caries on the lower ease and uh, lower D's. If the patient is uncooperative, I don't think that it's appropriate to take this child to the general anesthesia to do the uh, this kind of uh, the treatment, restorative treatment for this teeth. What would be the option then? Uh, we know that the whole technique, when it came, it made it a bit fast and it was very controversial, but now we have a very strong evidence with uh, conclusive uh, systematic reviews and meta-analysis that support the use of a uh, whole technique in our practice. So uh, you can see the result with after two years follow-up, all the TAs were crowned with the whole technique, patient is uh, uh, doing very well and no complaint, we restore the function, of the teeth and we stop the uh, caries, uh, caries uh, growth, uh, progress, and the bacterial load in the patient's mouth. So here is a, the, the, if you are interested about the whole technique, here is a, a whole technique manual from the University of Dundee. You can find it in their website. It's free and you can use it. Uh, please go through it and it provides you a very uh, uh, helpful information with the evidence. Uh, to use it in your practice uh, in future. So basically the whole technique, how it uh, works, it has no drilling, no local anesthesia. By ortho having an orthodontic separators, you create a space between the teeth. And once you have a space between the teeth, you uh, try and choose a correct size of the crown that fit the tooth. It should be a, a passive fit before you uh, cement it. And then you fill it the crown uh, with the uh, GIC cement 
And then you cemented, ask the patient to bite on a cotton roll, you remove the excess cement, and that's it. It's quite helpful, uh, very quick, and minimal discomfort to the uh, uh, patients. So that's one of the, our biological management technique that we have. Uh, that's another case of the hall technique. The upper and lower teeth were restored with the hall technique with a stainless steel crown. So let's come now to our, I mean, our topic, which is a silver diamond fluoride. Uh, it's, a, a, it's a, I can say that it is a revolution somehow, but is it new? Let's come to this to the answer this question now. So what is an SDF or silver diamine fluoride? Uh, is a colorless actually? It's a colorless, odorless. It contains silver, fluoride, and ammonium. Uh, ammonium is a stabilizing agent, so the main contents are the silver and fluoride. And silver diamond was first developed. So it's not a revolution because it's not new. It was developed in 1960s in Japan, and it was used an antibacterial properties for uh, of the silver, and because it contains uh, fluoride. It is used uh, for the preventive uh, effect uh, for the uh, uh, dental uh, caries. So, uh, and the first case that was reported was in 1969 by, Yaga, Yaga, by uh, Yamaga in 1969. That was the first case of using SDF. Uh, silver was used uh, centuries back for because of its uh, antibacterial effect. But uh, having a combination of silver and fluoride as an STF, first it was used in 1969. So uh, the current uh, formula in the market that we have, it's 38% STF that contains a high concentration of the fluoride ions. So uh, it contains 44,800 fluoride part per million, uh, which is almost double of the fluoride varnish which used. 5% uh, fluoride varnish that we use, it has 22,600 part per million of fluoride. So it's almost double amount of the uh, fluoride in the silver diamond uh, fluoride of 38%. So uh, as a new drug, it was used initially only in Japan, and but to have it used, uh, I mean worldwide, we have to get the clearance from the FDA. FDA, uh, they cleared the F, they cleared the uh, the uh, uh, SDF as a class two medical device in August 20, uh, 2014 for the use for dentine hypersensitivity only. Uh, we all know that the SDF, when it was introduced and used in Japan, it was used for the as a karyostatic, which stopped the caries uh, in 1960s and 1970s, but. Uh, the, they have only uh, uh, cleared uh, SDF in 2014, just to use it for the dentine hypersensitivity because it blocks the dentinal tubules. Uh, however, in 2016, when there were when they have been some uh, researchers uh, and some evidence about the SDF, uh, they awarded the SDF as off-label drug in October 2016. To arrest to you or to be used as to arrest dental decay in children and adults. So uh, so it is now being used uh, since 2016 as an off-label uh, drug. So what does off-label means? That it's a drug used uh, not. I mean the per the initial purpose is not to be used as a karyostatic uh, uh, agent, but if it is for the best interest of the child. And if your clinical judgment uh, does conclude that if the SDF, it's a proper uh, treatment plan or treatment to be used for a child, uh, then you can go ahead and use it. So you should have an evidence and you should have a clinical indication for each case to be used. So, so meanwhile, FDA has uh, awarded the SDF to be used as an off label. So keep that in your mind. Still, it's not being used as a medication or, uh, or I mean, uh, to be used uh, routinely, but as an off label drug. So, similar to fluoride varnish, actually, it's uh, also in the US it's used as off label. So, let's come to the initial question Is silver diamond fluoride, is it a revolution? Um, they, uh, when you go back to the history that people used it, 
If you look here, in 1970s, it was developed SDF and used in Japan. So it's not a revolution. Actually, it is a denizence of the uh, silver diamond fluoride. It was used, but they stopped using it because there was not enough uh, evidence to support that. So here you can see that a uh, number of publications that uh, are there in the, now in the literature uh, from the uh, time that it was started to be used uh, in Japan until you can see here in 2014, uh, which FDA uh, they is, uh, gave the award and clearance to the to use uh, SDF as for a hypersensitivity drug. From 2014, you can see how uh, steep is this uh, 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 curve, and you can see the number of the uh, the publications increased now until 2019. It was around almost 60 per 60 publications uh, in the uh, until 2019. Here we are almost in 2020 and the uh, number is around maybe around 10 or 9 uh, publications so far in this four month uh, of uh, the, first, the year 2020. I'm sure now many people now are busy with doing research now on the COVID-19. So uh, and having the, um, the uh, uh, they are staying at home so they cannot go and do some research. So hopefully this curve will not come down for 2020 and let's pray that it will keep on going up. So you can see the number of the publications increased from the uh, 2014. So uh, the most commercially available STF in the market, uh, they are 12%, 10%, but the most commonly available uh, or, or commercially available and uh, proven to be effective is 38% of the silver diamond fluoride, which is used in the USA, in Brazil, Argentina, and Japan, and in the UK, and also here in the UAE, uh, the percentage that is available for us to use is a 38%. So what is the STF optimal concentration? So 38% is the optimal uh, concentration, but we, we have two, uh, I mean, two popular STF products in the market in general. Uh, Let's start with the Advantage Arrest, which is used in Canada, in US, and in Gulf countries, and in Australia. They use the Advantage Arrest STF, is a 38% STF only. And the difference uh, thing about Advantage Arrest is that, as you can see, it's tinted uh, blue. Uh, initially, as you remember, we say that the STF is colorless. Uh, since it stains everything that it comes in contact with the SDF, it stains your hand, your finger, your clothes. So it was really, it was really, I mean, uh, not convenient to work with that uh, because it stains basically it stains everything that's come in contact with the SDF. So just to have the to uh, clearly see the uh, this uh, solution, they have tinted it blue in Advantage Arrest, which is I think that's a very clear and smart. Uh, a step to go forward uh, because it makes your life easy. You can see the, the solution and it, uh, you can control the uh, spread of the solution. However, whatever commonly used now in UK, uh, they use the, the Rewa Star STF, which is again 38% STF, but they have added the potassium uh, iodide uh, in it and they call it a smart desensitizing agent. This is what they call the, uh, the Rewa Star. Uh, they call it an smart, smart. Why they call it a smart? Uh, we'll come now into more detail when we talk about the STF itself and what it does. STF it is the to uh, the carriers, the, the dentine and uh, enamel or any or even the mucosa. It is stained black when it comes into contact with it. So uh, that was an unpleasant for the patient. Uh, to accept aesthetically this black discoloration of the uh, teeth when treated by SDF. Uh, they claim that uh, the potassium iodide, it reduces the, uh, the, the darkness or uh, blackness of the, uh, of the teeth after being treated or applied by SDF. So uh, this is what they have added in it, but uh, 
to look into the literature and see if it works or no, we'll have it in the coming slides, but keep in your mind that we have now commercial, the most common are the uh, advantage errors, and we have the uh, Rewa star, which is has an addition to the STF. It has potassium iodine to reduce the staining of the uh, teeth or black discoloration. So now let's talk about the mechanism of the STF. How does the STF work? To know the mechanism of STF, let's go and have a look at the, the uh, chemical contents of the of the SDF itself. So in the SDF, as we said, silver, diamond, fluoride, the main content is the silver. So silver, we you know from the centuries back in the medicine, it was used as an antibacterial effect. It is a very strong antibacterial effect. And we know that the dental care is all by the, the bacterial activity and uh, uh, which is, is in the uh, dental plug and the, the dental caries. So uh, uh, we really get a uh, benefit from the having a silver uh, typically applied on the dental caries to reduce the antibacterial effect. And mind that the uh, silver, it has a zombie effect on the bacteria. What do I mean by zombie effect? Uh, bacteria that are in contact with silver, uh, the, the dead bacteria that came in contact with the silver, this bacteria, if they, they get, come in contact with a live bacteria, they kill them. So that's very really, uh, a good thing about the silver, antibacterial effect of the silver. It has a zombie effect. So the, even the killed bacteria that are in contact with the silver, when they come in contact with the live bacteria, uh, so they have the they can they have the bactericidal effect. So that's a very, very good thing about the uh, silver uh, in this uh, SDF. The other content is the fluoride. We are all familiar with the fluoride. We know that it has a remineralization effect. It prevents demineralization also. And uh, don't forget that the fluoride itself it is an it has an antibacterial effect or bactericidal effect which is much, much lesser than the silver, but still don't forget the antibacterial effect of the fluoride. So uh, the other uh, factor, which is it's a silver, uh, a silver precipitates and calcium fluoride, which is uh, in, will be formed on the uh, two, when it comes into contact with tooth surface. So silver precipitates and calcium fluoride, this will reduce the patency of the entire tubules. So that's why we will you, you use them for the uh, in cases of sensitivity, when we have root caries uh, or sensitivity, or we will talk now in, few, uh, in uh, coming slides, when we talk about the MIH, in case of MIH, when the teeth are more porous and they are more sensitive than the natural teeth, uh, using, and because of the dentinal tubules are much wider, using uh, STF uh, proven to reduce the sensitivity in those cases because of the silver precipitates and calcium fluoride, which blocks the dentinal tubules. And aluminum hydroxide also, uh, uh, the, it has a collagenase inhibition uh, of the on the in the dentine. So that's also what prevents uh, uh, because of its pH. Also, uh, it prevents the uh, uh, caries to become active and become soft. It hardens the uh, the tooth surface. Uh, there are a lot of studies on that. Almost around 20. Basically, I can maybe more than 29 studies on the just mechanism of silver diamond fluoride. We have in the literature. We have 11 studies about the antibacterial. Anti, sorry, antimicrobial properties, 20 about remineralization and demineralization, and about the collagen inhibition, we have almost around four studies that have proven these uh, properties of, uh, of uh, silver diamine fluoride. Uh, don't forget that the silver in the STF is responsible for the staining the tooth black. So let's think now, once you applied silver diamine fluoride, what's going to happen to the tooth or, or as we say, that it's going to arrest the tooth, but how deep it's going to penetrate to have the effect of silver diamond fluoride and arrest the uh, superficial layer. Uh, on the top uh, right picture, you can see the silver penetration in an uh, carious dentine. Uh, we can see that how uh, they go around two uh, 
uh, one to two millimeter of the of the surface of the decadiosintine will be penetrated by silver. But if you look at the bottom uh, left picture here, you can see that the uh, it shows the arrested uh, area where we can see that it's around 120 to 1,500 micrometer, which equals to around 1.5 millimeters of the surface will get arrested. Having a only 1.5 millimeter of the, uh, of the surface arrested, keep that in your mind that it's very superficial. So uh, you should not touch a, a silver dam CF treated dental carry surface because only keep in mind that only superficial surface of the uh, carious tooth is uh, the area that it's got arrested. So uh, removing extra superficial layer will keep you, uh, will remove this arrested and uh, remineralize and harden surface from the tooth structure. So maximum it can reach up to 1.5 in some areas and it can range from the around one, one millimeter to 1.5 millimeter of penetration. The wider the dentinal tubules and the more you keep uh, the uh, STF uh, on the tooth surface during the application time, the deeper the penetration it will be. Uh, on, and you can see here on the uh, lower uh, right, uh, uh, this chart, it shows the distance uh, from the lesion and of the soft caries and arrested. So here you can see that the hardness of the uh, the of the surface is around uh, 200 up to 200 uh, micrometer, micrometers. We have the hardness more than the uh, soft caries, but after that it will be uh, it will be equal. So keep that in your mind that only the hardness is very superficial. So don't try to uh, play with the super to the of the arrested carries and uh, don't break this uh, uh, barrier. So uh, now in the clinic, how do you need to apply the STF? It's very quick. Uh, it's uh, very child friendly, painless, uh, required minimal cooperation from the child, though mainly the only cooperation you need that uh, for isolation to protect the soft tissue from coming uh, becoming in contact with the SDF. To, okay, so uh, to uh, uh, protect the soft tissue, the extra oral area, the lip and the gum, uh, uh, always uh, we advise to apply uh, petroleum jelly uh, on the uh, mucosa, uh, uh, on the area that you might touch, if, even your finger, if they come in contact with the SDF and you touch the uh, lip, it might uh, get a stain. Uh, and uh, for the uh, mind, the pH of the STF, uh, pH is very high actually for the STF. Uh, for the uh, uh, advantage arrest, which is commonly used here in the our countries and in the US, uh, the pH of the STF is 10, uh, and the uh, Rivas star, which is used in UK, it's 13 percent. So that's much higher than the advantage errors. Uh, when it comes into contact, especially the reverse star, which is 13, the pH, when it comes in contact with the soft tissue, it causes chemical burn. So mind that and try to protect the soft tissue uh, from uh, getting a chemical burn, although, although it is very mild, but it might cause some discomfort for children and uh, parents might not, uh, might get a bit uh, frustrated from that. So keep that in your mind to protect the gum and the, t and the soft tissue when you're applying, uh, before applying the STM. So once you are ready, you have, uh, you covered your glove, you have your gloves on and you uh, protected the area that might be in touch with the STF and you cover the soft tissue with the petroleum jelly. Uh, only one drop of the STF, uh, it's more, more than enough for an application per visit, which you can use for up to five to six teeth uh, with one drop of the uh, STF. So have it in a, a disposable or a plastic uh, or, uh, because it will stain any material that you use. So have it in a, have a dappen dish only for STF because it will turn black. So have an uh, STF and uh, isolation either you can use cotton roll in more cooperative or for the root caries you can use rubber dam 
to protect the soft tissue. Uh, so anyway, we, have, we need to have a good isolation. You dry the teeth and you don't need to excavate. Uh, for the STF, excavation is not mandatory. You don't need actually to excavate. Uh, you just remove the uh, superficial plug or food debris, uh, only superficial. And once you prepare the cavity and it's clean from the de food debris and plug, you dry the tooth with having a good isolation. You apply with the well, with the micro brush. You uh, you apply a very minimal amount of the STF on the cavity and you leave it for one minute. Uh, one minute is really quite important just to allow enough penetration of the STF and then you ask you after one minute if the patients you see that the patients becoming cooperative it's fine to end I mean to wipe it off before one minute but in case that you found out that the patient is uh, uh, cooperative and you can proceed uh, keep it for one minute for enough penetration of the STF into the dentinal tubules and the tissue after that you can ask them to rinse if it's you find that you have used the SCF for more than one tooth or you can uh, you can just wipe the excess amount and ask the patient to leave. They can eat directly. Uh, studies have shown that it doesn't affect the uh, eating after that. It doesn't really affect. So that one minute is more than enough. And you will start to see the darkness or become first it become brownish. But few, after a few hours, you see that the, the cavity is getting darker. To have a detailed, to know the uh, details about the step-by-step -step procedure, you can always access the AAPD online. They have the chairside guide. And please, if you want, you just go ahead and uh, look at it. Uh, it's available online free. Okay, so treated lesions will turn black soon. Uh, uh, the black dark discoloration you can observe it within one uh, week. You see that the uh, the cavity or the surfaces treated with the STF they turn black. As you can see in these pictures, these are usually after one to two weeks so they get uh, this uh, color. They get black. Uh, before I mean a couple of years back, uh, they were saying that the this black uh, the uh, discoloration or this uh, black dis uh, color is the uh, the uh, follow up uh, test. I mean, if you have in the follow up uh, visits, if you see the uh, surface is black, that means it is working. But nowadays, the studies have shown no, the black the discoloration it's not enough. And uh, don't forget to probe it, uh, probe the area, and you have to feel the arrested hardness, hard surface uh, that is arrested. If you don't feel the hardness, then it is sure that it's still active, might require further application, or you can change your treatment plan as per the uh, cooperation of the child. Uh, but keep in your mind that nowadays, uh, the evidence show that black discoloration is not the uh, only or the best uh, uh, success criteria. So you have to plus a discoloration. You have to feel it by probing. So uh, let's go back to the Riva Star that we say that's being used now in uh, UK. Uh, they have added the potassium iodine. They claim that it mitigate the black staining of the arrested uh, carious lesion. Uh, does it do okay? Does it work? We'll come to that. And silver ions. Uh, and silver ions reacting with the potassium iodide, the ions, they form the silver iodide. Okay. There are conflicting evidence actually uh, in the literature. There are not much in support of using that. And to answer the question, does it really change the color? It will reduce the color, but it doesn't change the color. Uh, uh, I mean, there is not, it's not significantly change the color. Still, you can see around the margin if you do, uh, usually they used to apply the potassium iodine when they had used to apply uh, GIC on top of the cavity. And uh, uh, I mean, as a follow up or after uh, uh, using the STF, they used to apply GIC on top of the STF and they were, I mean, they didn't like the black discoloration or shadow. So uh, they have added the potassium iodine, but still evidence show that still the discoloration is there, uh, maybe much a bit less 
but still the discoloration is there, especially on the margins of the restoration. And does it affect the success rate of the STF? There are co conflicting evidence that say that adding the, the potassium iodine will reduce the uh, arresting uh, or arresting uh, efficacy of the STF by adding the potassium iodine. They saw they were saw that in vitro studies that the having an uh, potassium iodine uh, with the SDF, there will be less quality of arresting uh, caries, less hardness. And does it affect the restoration adhesion? It doesn't affect the uh, adhesive restoration, but studies have shown in vitro, now recent studies in 2019 that was published that they found strong studies actually, uh, they found out that uh, it affect the GIC uh, chemical bonding uh, to the teeth with the inconvenient cut, they come in contact with the uh, silver iodide. So it, if you are using if you are using GIC, uh, as current uh, evidence says that don't use it because it affects the uh, bonding chemical bond of the GIC with the reverse star if it is used uh, with that. So how long do you need to follow up after placing the STF? Uh, usually, uh, if the cavity was deep, uh, advise it to, to follow up after two to four weeks uh, after the first application, because we don't want to let the patient go without having the uh, follow up visit. So we need as soon as two to four weeks if it was deep cavities and lesions that are not arrested in the follow up, you can uh, treat them with another application of STF. Uh, so basically, in the, fo the follow-up visits, if, a if, uh, if an enamel was cavitated uh, or it was rough and you would demineralize and it got rough and you applied STF, in the follow-up visit, you should feel the smooth enamel. Uh, and uh, would I need to add that uh, STF, it doesn't stain uh, intact enamel. It only stains carious or demineralized uh, enamel, but it does affect the uh, dentine. So when you apply STF on the enamel, and so that's why we say that the color is not a, a, a success uh, criteria for us, the color if it turns black or no. Uh, when you apply STF on an intact enamel, uh, it will not turn black or it, it do doesn't uh, look like uh, grayish in color. Uh, so, but the only thing is this, it should feel more smooth. That's a, that's a, uh, a follow up, uh, uh, I mean, investigations that you do. And for the dentine, you should have a hard dentine. If you use it for hypersensitivity, uh, therefore the root caries, or in case of molar incisor or uh, high polarization, in case of MIH, then you should have in the follow up as a success criterion, you should have reduced dentine hypersensitivity. And in the follow up, if you feel it is appropriate, uh, like let's say after a year and the patient got cooperation, you worked on diclamatization, think of the best restoration for the child if you can restore the uh, restore the tooth. And um, the biannual reapplication, it is advised uh, now because they found out the success rate of biannual is around 70 to 80 percent. While have, having the STF application once in a year, the success rate is around 60%. So to increase the success rate of uh, this uh, STF application, it is recommended now the high uh, strong evidence show that by annual application every six month STF, uh, it is uh, to, to have a continued effect of the uh, of the STF because silver the silver will dissolve over the time, so the, the hardness might reduce over the time. So reapplication every six months is uh, recommended. So if you are working in private practice, you might ask, can you charge the patient with STF? Yes. Uh, CDT code for the SCF is 1354, which is interim caries arresting medication application. So it is there now. We have a code for this, the CDT a code for it. So let's now briefly go through the uh, literature and see what does the literature now. Since 2014, we say that the literature now we have a strong, uh, we have around 13 uh, systematic reviews uh, on the STF. Uh, especially for the K 
Kid, uh, Kid is arresting. And although it was uh, licensed to be used for the hypersensitivity and root caries, but the number, but maybe we have only three systematic reviews for the root caries, but we have around 13 systematic reviews for the root caries arresting uh, efficacy of the SDF. So uh, they, okay, let's review now. Uh, there are studies that they compared the, the SDF with the placebo. They found that the, it's quite effective SDF in arresting caries when compared to placebo. And uh, also they found that the value when compared, when they compared the uh, SCF with the various concentration, they found that the 38% is the most superior, it has superior effectiveness than 10% or 12%, uh, which was uh, initially in the market, but now uh, it's uh, most of the market, they or most of the practitioners, they use 38% because it is uh, in evidence, it is proven to be effective uh, more effective than, uh, than the lower concentrations. And regarding the multiple concentration, uh, uh, multiple applications, as we said, when you apply the SCF uh, uh, biannually, twice, uh, twice a year, it has more effect, it is more effective than having a single application. And the recent systematic review and meta-analysis that, or not recent, 2016 actually, it was uh, conducted, they found that 38% STF, it has 81% uh, McCary's arrest in active lesions in the primary teeth uh, and 85% at six months. And as we said that because it's reduced, 71% uh, at 30 months. So, uh, so at six months it is as high as 85 percent but it will the uh, effectiveness will reduce so the way the, the, now it comes for the reapplication uh, recommendation to have this peak as high as uh, uh, possible okay in safo uh, from the university of dundee they have done a fantastic umbrella review in 2019 late 2019 actually which is very recent uh, to t I mean, umbrella review, it's a review of the systematic reviews. It's quite a strong evidence. Uh, evidence. So uh, it is a fantastic paper. Please go and read it. Uh, I'll just tell you the, the um, uh, they have very interesting uh, conclusion. So they found out that in this umbrella review of, of the system of the strong systematic reviews, they have included 13 systematic reviews and they found out that SDF effectiveness it's uh, uh, there is a strength body of the research that supports STF effectiveness. I just bear with me the constraint here because it says that only if there is effectiveness, uh, strong evidence for arresting the coronal caries uh, lesions in, in children in primary teeth, and uh, for the arresting and preventing of the root caries lesions in uh, older adults. Uh, so here the, it comes that keep in your mind that now by having this umbrella review, this conclusion, and they have found that there is a strange body of research and evidence. So for primary teeth, they found that there is not enough evidence to support the uh, preventive effect of STF. So uh, if you want to use it, uh, STF, and since you know it's uh, off label and you should have a strong evidence to use it, for primary teeth, it should be used. Uh, for the caries arrest, because what we have evidence, evidence to support that, but for the uh, root caries, it can be used as a prevention and as a, the uh, caries arrest for the root caries in adults, because there are a lot of evidence to support that. So, however, the evidence uh, around the STF for preventing the for prevention of the coronal caries in primary teeth was uh, very low. Uh, we don't have much studies about the prevention of the caries for the primary teeth. Uh, we have basically most of them, they are case reports, but we don't have a good randomized clinical trial to support uh, or to give a strong evidence for using the SCF for prevention in primary teeth. Moreover, there is insufficient evidence also to draw a conclusion to use SCF in the permanent teeth uh, uh, in children. Uh, we, I know that there are some papers, some uh, uh, evidence to show the effectiveness of the SCF in the MIH cases, uh, which is used basically, basically uh, for the sensitivity to reduce the 
sensitivity of uh, blocking the internal tubules, they use SCF, but they, we don't have any sufficient evidence now to use the SCF as a prevention, a preventive measure in permanent teeth nor in uh, primary teeth. So it can be used now for evidence show to use it as a caries, um, arresting caries in primary teeth uh, only. So the case selection, you should be very careful when you use. If you remember my uh, first slides, when we described that uh, we have pre-cooperative children sometimes, we have uh, children uncooperative, we have a special needs. So you need to really think of using, uh, the, uh, they have uh, indication for it. And uh, don't forget that if, if you want to use STF, you should have an indication uh, for it to use because it is off label and should have an evidence and an indication to be uh, for the child's best interest to be used. If it's something for the, in the child's best interest to be used, then uh, you might not be, it not, might be justified to use SCF if you don't have a good justification. So indication, uh, if you were uh, my colleagues in pediatric dentistry or anyone who used a uh, whole crown, uh, SCF is quite similar to the whole crown when it was used. So indications you have uh, asymptomatic cavitated uh, dentine lesions should be asymptomatic and the cavity should be cleansable. Uh, cleansable uh, and at the same time, you should be have a, a cavity which is accessible to you to apply STF. Uh, interproximal caries, if you don't have access, uh, then you cannot do uh, apply STF. So it should be cleansable cavity because you're relying on the fluoride from the fluoride varnish and fluoride toothpaste. Um, so we should have a cleansing to keep the uh, recharging the fluoride on the uh, tooth surface. And the tooth should be either non-restorable or you have several teeth and you don't have time to finish all. So as a case is stabilization. Or you can use it for the root caries, which is proven, or for dentine hypersensitivity uh, in case of MIH or in the root caries or any case that you have sensitivity. When you come to the patient's level, that's what's teeth level. When we come to the patient level, uh, for when you have behavioral medical uh, uh, management issues, when they, they don't have access to the restorative dental treatment, uh, and if you have cognitive physical disabilities, and in case of dental phobias. Contraindications, there are not much actually contraindications. Uh, contraindication, one of the contraindications is when you have irreversible pulpitis or dental abscess, uh, when you have uh, pulp tissue or deep cavities, can use it in deep cavities. We'll come that in the next slide. Or, or in cases that you are unable to, or patient is unable or willing to brush, because we are really, uh, relying on the removing the plug from the tooth surface after applying the STF and uh, adding more uh, uh, fluoride from the toothpaste and fluoride varnishes after applying the STF. So really, really need the patient's uh, compliance as well. Ulcerative gingivitis, yes, we say that if they have ulcerative gingivitis, it might get worse. Why? Because of the pH. It is high, 10 to 13, according to the drug, with the, I mean, the, the product that you're using, it's quite high, it might cause chemical burn. So those who have silver or potassium allergy, uh, but still there are, uh, there are no any cases of STF uh, allergy from the silver or potassium, there are no any case reports, but since it has silver and potassium, although it's very minimal, uh, you need to consider that. Uh, parental patients' objection of staining because it stain the teeth. Um, some parents or, uh, or patients, they might object of they don't like having their teeth become black, especially in the anterior teeth. Or you have the option of treating the tooth. If you can't treat the tooth, don't think of applying STF. Go ahead and treat the tooth with restoration or a crown. So does it affect the pulp tissue? It's very really controversial. Some say they found that it doesn't affect. Uh, some studies show negative effects, some studies they show positive effect. It's not very clear, still more studies need to be done on that. Uh, but according to the manufacturer, uh, they say that placing uh, the, in the uh, inner one third of the dentine, try to not, it's not recommended to apply ex according to the manufacturer uh, recommendation. But studies, they have not reported any kind of uh, pulp tissue uh, irritation or inflammation by after applying the STF. 
So what adverse effect it has? It, they might feel some metallic taste, uh, transient mild erythema or white mucosal lesion irritation due to their having a high pH, uh, and mucosal lesion in adults resolve uh, within one week. And the discoloration, if it is stained your hand, I mean, it stained the hand, it's like tattoo or henna. Uh, this uh, stain will go when you have turnover of the cells of the skin and mucosa. So it is a temporary, when you have turnover of the cells, new cells will come and the stained teeth will go away. So here you can see one of the cases, my cases here, there was mini, uh, enamel uh, roughness that were radiographically doesn't show that there is it's any cavitation and uh, there was not enough uh, petroleum jelly applied here. And you need to be very careful actually when you apply uh, petroleum jelly not to become in contact with the tooth surface because that will reduce the penetration. So sometimes you are, you are not sure of uh, where to apply or how much to apply, but at the same time you want to have a uh, direct contact of SCF with the tooth surface and having a high penetration. So you can see the discoloration of the mucosa, uh, which uh, usually will go away within a few uh, days. So how can you treat this? You have SCF, there are a couple of options to use SCF as a non-restorative carrier uh, control, which means that you don't do any restoration. You just apply the SCF on top of the caries and it turns black and then you apply a uh, fluoride. Sorry, I forgot to mention that when I uh, spoke, uh, when I told you the uh, steps of doing the uh, STF, uh, always remember that after applying STF on the cavities, you have to apply fluoride warnish along with the STF on the all the teeth. So because we are, uh, our primary preventive measure is fluoride warnish and STF is a secondary preventive measure. Uh, so don't forget to apply uh, fluoride warnish after each application of SCF, uh, as according to the guidelines that we have, we, uh, three to four times per year, we need to apply fluoride varnish uh, for uh, kids according to their uh, caries risk. So we have the option of uh, SCF in, with no any restoration or caries control. Uh, one reason could be when you want to engage parents or children or patients with you uh, to work on their behavior, and to make them, or sometimes when you don't see that they are performing a good preventive measures, you need to work on prevention before doing any restoration. So meanwhile, when you are engaging with the patient and with the parents, you can apply STF and leave them until you ch the child become cooperative, uh, the parents become um, more co cooperative as per the providing preventive measure to their kids. And uh, don't forget that we need to work also, uh, other than behavior of the child during this period, you need to work on prevention. If you start doing treatment uh, immediately without working on the uh, uh, prevention, it's like you replace the windows in a burning house. You don't go and uh, ch uh, change the windows if the house is burning. You stop the, uh, the fire first. So that's when it comes prevention. So uh, by having these two options, where they work on the engaging uh, the, on the, uh, with the parents and having the child cooperative and working on prevention, uh, and you need to buy some time. So to have uh, this in these cases, you you need to have the SCF with no restorative uh, uh, restoration. Here are one of our cases. I put a picture of this with the camera just to remind you that always you have to take photos. Because you don't, we don't want you to rely on your memory to remember the uh, how hard, the, what was the color of the tooth or the hardness. Uh, always take a photo to have a, on each follow up. You can see the progress of uh, effectiveness of the silver diamond fluoride. So don't forget to take photos in each uh, visit. So other option is when you have STF as a, the restorative uh, based uh, for the caries control. So. They call it play smart, so let's see if they, they are smart. They call it as a smart technique, which is silver modified atraumatic restorative technique. So basically what they have, to, what this technique uh, uh, does, we use STF on the uh, floor of the cavity, uh, like normal STF that we do, uh, uh, but before that they excavate. 
So it's like ART, a traumatic restoration. They do is excavate the cavity, uh, the soft caries, they apply STF, and either they do immediately, they apply GIC immediately after STF or after a week or, uh, or on the next visit. So it's a combination of a caries removal, superficial caries removal, applying STF, and then followed by a GIC on the top. They call it a SMART technique, which is silver modified atraumatic restoration. The other SMART is a SMART hole, uh, which we, you, as I briefly talk about the hole technique, which you just go and cover the cavity with having a stainless steel crown with a GIC without any preparation. In the SMART hole, it's where you apply STF, as you can see in this case, we applied STF, and once we saw that the caries is arrested, then you apply a hole technique. So basically, it's uh, two uh, steps of when instead of having a hole technique alone, you have a STF uh, uh, first, and then either immediately or after some time, you uh, place your crown. So I have some, um, it is, although they call it a smart, but keep in your mind, the smart technique and the smart hole there are no any, any randomized clinical trials uh, to prove that. Uh, as we know, and we have published uh, papers uh, in, uh, from our university about the whole technique they have, uh, with the, uh, our uh, resident, my colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Hala bin Laden, uh, the success rate of whole technique is uh, more than 97, 98 percent. It has high success rate. Uh, why you don't use it alone? So is it more effective if you use it STF with the whole technique? Well, there are no any randomized clinical trial. I don't have any answer for that. And I don't have any evidence to support my uh, technique. So it's just they are playing with the adding STF to everything. And uh, there are case reports being uh, published, but there are no any randomized clinical trials. And there are no any long term uh, follow ups uh, to prove uh, the, their effectiveness. Uh, is it more efficient to use it or no? Is it more efficient to use STF alone uh, or STF with, uh, with GIC or caries removal? Uh, no one knows. How about the effect of, effect of GIC bond on the dentine? As we said, the STF, uh, it affects the chemical bond of the, of the GIC on the dentine. So if you use a smart technique, keep in your mind that the recently new vitro studies they have found, uh, found out that if you use STF uh, before uh, uh, placing the GIC, the chemical bond of the GIC will be less. So uh, that's recent uh, vitro studies uh, on that. So is it more aesthetic? Uh, if in case of ART, I mean, we cannot say that on the whole, a smart hole because the tooth will be covered by a stainless steel crown. But in case of uh, a smart, which is uh, with ART technique, uh, they show that still the GIC will get stained, uh, uh, margins will have the stains, and the recurrent caries is more around when you have, we do a ART. Also, new studies they found that uh, if you use ART, uh, a smart technique, there is higher risk of secondary caries than when you use a smart technique, uh, uh, I mean, STF alone. So that's one of our smart hole technique that we arrested the carriage with STF, and then we uh, did our whole crown in this trial. So that's a smart whole case. So uh, one of the drawbacks of the STF is the parental or patient acceptance because of its black discoloration. It's discolored the teeth. So you can see here, uh, according to the staining, uh, when you have this dark blue, is anterior teeth and posterior teeth, so most of the of the uh, parents they were unhappy when the STF was placed on the anterior teeth than the posterior. So, but very minimal of them, uh, uh, they were only 10% were happy with having STF on the anterior teeth, and that might have uh, another justification why they are happy. I'll come to that because there are some other factors which you need to consider. Uh, before applying uh, to make sure that they are happy, they will be happy with applying SDF on their anterior teeth. Okay, so now uh, here the when uh, this is the behavior of the child. 
the light blue, it shows the, the patients were either very uncooperative or very pre-cooperative with they needed uh, GA. So as a replacement with the option of having GA, they were offered in this study uh, by Crystal in 2017, they were offered of uh, option of STF. So here you can see that those who were uh, in need of GA, uh, the uh, 60 the, from the uh, it, the success rate of the anterior and posterior to almost similar uh, it's 60 to 70 percent so so um, that shows that if the patient parents were offered with stf and instead of going for general anesthesia then that could be a uh, good option and they will be happy with the black discoloration uh, here are also uh, some other papers that show that uh, patient parents were uh, they found it accepted acceptable uh, uh, treatment they found that pain free uh, although they some discoloration but studies have shown that there are people that still they are happy with having the SDF so do they have other option that's a that's the case if they don't have other option definitely they will accept the black discoloration if they cannot afford or they don't accept going uh, for general anesthesia, then they don't have any other option. Then definitely their acceptance level will be much higher when you offer them the STF with the black discoloration. So that's the case. So you need to have really good discussion with the patient. You need to give a, a, a proper informed consent telling them of the consequences of blood discoloration after applying the STF. If they are, they know that and that they have all the other alternatives and they agree with having the STF uh, uh, instead of going for general anesthesia, um, studies have shown that they, are, they will be more satisfied with the black discoloration. So let's talk about the safety of the STF. It has high fluoride concentration. As we said, it has 44,000. 800, which is the more than double of the uh, double of the uh, uh, fluoride varnish. So uh, the recommendation is just to use only one drop. And mind that uh, one drop of STF it has around 2.2 uh, milligram of the uh, uh, fluoride. However, fluoride varnish, if you use one drop, it has around 11 milligrams of the uh, fluoride in it. So. Uh, if you use one gram, uh, sorry, one drop of fuller of the uh, STF per visit, then you are safe because it has 2.2 rather than if you use a fluoride varnish, one drop it has 11. So it's much higher in fluoride varnish. So silver ion, it is bioactive. So that's why we, the recommendation is to use three teeth per visit. So it is safe. They have the, nothing has been reported. And uh, no, there are no risk of dental fluorosis, as we said that the uh, one drop it has much less than fluoride varnish event. And in the recent uh, study of uh, STF, which was on 888, three to four years, and uh, they found that uh, uh, it has uh, six percent they had gum pain, gum swelling two percent almost, gum bleeding four to seven. That's because of the high percentage. So very minimal or mild. Uh, discomfort it might be followed by so it's quite safe to use it so just to wrap up as a conclusion so SCF is a useful and safe alternative why because of its cost uh, per visit it might cost you around 20 dollars uh, and uh, one bottle is around 120 so you know, for the patients it's quite I mean having instead of having a general anesthesia it's quite low cost easy to use and arrested cavitated lesions, but uh, keep in your mind that arrest the cavitated lesion, but not all the time. And you, need, you might need to apply more than once to have, uh, or biannual, or, or maybe more to have the teeth, make sure that they are arrested. It is evidence-based. We have the umbrella review now, uh, which say that uh, we have multiple moderate to low quality studies to, uh, to uh, support that, but still, uh, there are a lot of questions uh, around with a lot of gap and we are at the um, MBRU. We are working on some uh, researches now and I'm sure uh, all, over, all over the world 
they are doing a lot of research on the STF. So hopefully within the coming years, we will come to many uh, to answer many questions and doubts. Uh, prevention, uh, does it have a preventive effect? Actually, not much except on the root caries. Uh, so don't think about it as a preventive measure. It's mostly used if you want to use it as an arresting case in primary teeth only. This is what the evidence we have now. Uh, but still keep in your mind that patient still has to manage their caries risk by having the periodic uh, 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 preventive measures. Uh, fluoride toothpaste, you need to work on their diet and fluoride varnish and sealant and etc. to make them safe uh, throughout. So don't think that when you apply SDF, you leave the patient go. So uh, I hope everyone is safe now. We are talking about SDF, uh, where everyone is talking about COVID. I uh, hope that we stopped uh, hearing for at least one hour about COVID-19, but uh, don't go away. I have one. COVID, only one slide about COVID-19. Okay, this is a recent paper uh, published in the International IJPD, International Pediatric Dentistry, just recently on the 6th of April. It talks about the characteristics in children uh, and consideration for dentists providing their care. Uh, I'll just read this paragraph for you uh, and see how they how they are people are thinking with this pandemic now. So they say that once practice. Uh, restrictions begin to be eased, inshallah soon, uh, co or continue the management of the dental disease with contemporary dentistry through the minimal in, in, uh, interventive concept and other non aerosol generating uh, procedures uh, when you use like uh, cases that you don't use uh, drill, uh, it means uh, while viral transmission risk remain high will be uh, pertinent. Uh, these include atraumatic illustrative, Sealing in caries uh, using Fisher sealant and our topic silver diamond fluoride and uh, selective caries removal and hole technique. So they have suggested to use that inshallah soon after that because it's to see the risk might be high and to uh, uh, reduce the, uh, the tra I mean, transmission of the uh, disease uh, between the uh, healthcare providers and patients and the staff. So don't forget to work on prevention and don't replace the windows in a burning house or work on the prevention. We have, I mean, these two are the best preventive prevention documents. We're going to uh, find them online. We have the recent one from 2018 from the uh, uh, Scotland, from the SDF, and we have from the Department of the Health, from the NHS, also uh, it's from this toolkit. It's quite, uh, these two will provide you quite uh, enriched information and evidence-based preventive measures uh, for children and adults. So thank you so much. Uh, just uh, if you have any questions, please write them in the question and answer box. And please don't forget to scan the QR uh, uh, the code here because this QR code will take you to the evaluation uh, link where you need to do your survey and put your email address to receive the uh, certificate and keep in your mind that the certificate might take few uh, days so it will be in your inbox inshallah so uh, if you have any question please email me and uh, please don't forget to scan the qr box and now we'll move to uh, look at the, your questions and if you have time to answer them inshallah uh, uh, thank you for the excellent presentation so as you said, now it's time to uh, it is the time to uh, share some questions. If anyone has any question, um, okay. So uh, I'll start reading your questions. Uh, okay, the first okay one question here it says that is it safe to use in pregnancy? Uh, Yes, it is safe, in, but keep in your mind that it has potassium and they might, I mean, the potassium for it's not indicated to use uh, in pregnant. I mean, high a level of potassium, it's not really uh, advisable for those uh, pregnant or breastfeeding. So uh, for in pregnancy, uh, there are not a studies to support that, but they, uh, uh, there is a flag that don't use it because of the potassium and silver that it has and uh, might pass the placenta. So yeah, there are no evidence to support that. So don't use it in pregnancy. 
Uh, okay. One more question. Okay. Uh, Dr. Anas, I just want to say that we will publish the link for the evaluation form just at the end of the question, so everyone can access the evaluation form and then they can get their uh, certificates. OK, another thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, another question is that is it good for adults or only for children and babies? Uh, well, uh, uh, if you it depends on if you want to use it as an uh, carries arrest, then the evidence that we have it's only from for the uh, primary teeth. And if you want to use it as a uh, preventive measure or desensitizing agent, they can use it for uh, adults uh, also. But as a carrier's arrest, the only evidence that we have to support is only for the pro for the primary teeth. Uh, okay. Okay, I have one more question here. Say that what are the indications for minimal uh, drilling approach? A minimal drilling approach or no drilling approach actually, uh, which is the whole technique. I think I covered that in the presentation for any asymptomatic teeth uh, with any no palpable involvement and uh, with no any symptoms you can use that or if there is an indication because of the behavior of the child. Uh, OK. Uh, does SDF use does you used as a mode of treatment in MIH uh, and does it turn the turn it black? Uh, okay, does it um, okay the as a treatment of MIH? No, but only the the evidence that we have uh, the SCF to be used as a desensitizing agent. Uh, as you know that the MI teeth with MIH they are quite sensitive. Uh, they have sensitivity available during brushing, so it is uh, a good help to use SDF to reduce the sensitivity and there are no any other uh, uh, evidence to support as a treatment. If does it stain, it stains the demineralized uh, or carious enamel uh, only. If uh, the enamel is intact, it doesn't stain the enamel. OK, how often uh, for SDF to cause the discoloration of our teeth? Uh, or the tooth discoloration depend on the depth. Uh, OK, thank you, Dr. Khaled, for the question. Uh, discoloration is actually, you can see it after first uh, uh, application. The degree of discoloration, it might vary, depend on the how effective was that. Uh, the, uh, uh, it, if you have applied for one minute, where I do cover the whole area and enough penetration, yeah, then you might see discoloration uh, increased. But it, again, it depends on the patient oral hygiene, plug score. If uh, if there is a continuous uh, acidic attack on the tooth, it will be less effective. OK, you mentioned that arrested caries following SDF application uh, must be investigated further via dental probe. Uh, wouldn't be disturbed uh, uh, disturb the protective layer. Uh, yes, uh, I put the slide of the probe. It's a ball ended uh, probe. You shouldn't uh, disturb the surface, arrested surface. So you just probe to make it with a ball ended uh, probe. You use it. So we, do, we don't use the exploder or the sharp ended uh, uh, probe that we have. So only with the very blunt instrument to check for the hardness. Uh, yeah, that's a very good point. You shouldn't uh, disturb the uh, surface. As in case of the fluoride varnish, can we apply STF every three to four months uh, for high risk patients? No, so far there are no evidence. Uh, you can apply actually up to three to four. It's very, it's, uh, uh, it shows that the more you apply, uh, the more effective it will be. But the evidence that we have, it's maximum up to three applications. We don't have that much of evidence that support to apply. I don't know if uh, really if you apply more than uh, uh, four, five, three, four times. But definitely, if you have, the more the reapplication, the more the effect will be. But uh, the evidence or recommendations are not like fluoride varnish to be applied three to four times. Uh, for now, the recommendation is uh, uh, biannual. Uh, case by case based, you might have to apply one more time. Uh, I mean, still, uh, I don't have a uh, clear evidence to answer that. Uh, will SDF affect the, the bonding uh, for the sensitive steel crown because it affects the GIC chemical bonding? 
Uh, no studies has been done. I haven't seen any studies to look into that. But yes, uh, we know that SCF it affect the uh, GIC bonding, but I'm not sure how. I mean, having a crown with a good retentive crown, it might be actually quite retentive because it's the uh, it's not really the retention rate. It reduced around 20 percent uh, when applied GIC on the uh, placed GIC on top of the SCF tool. So the, I'm not sure if 20 percent will affect the crown dislodgement. Uh, there are not much study and the no studies. So that's from my uh, uh, I mean idea from the uh, chemical structure of that. Uh, can we use the STF during hot technique application just before the cementation? Uh, yes, you can use, but make sure that you ask the patient to rinse. I mean, the other thing that it's uh, now in the literature that rinsing after application of uh, uh, STF will uh, increase the bond, a bond uh, of the GIC with the uh, STF treated tool. So you can use directly STF uh, cr whole crown after STF, but make sure you wipe the area very well and you ask them to rinse uh, after the application of STF. Okay, is there any difference between caries progression with fluoride uh, with the STF application? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, I mean, uh, keep in your mind that uh, fluoride is uh, it has minimal uh, caries arrest effect. It's only it has 10 to 20 percent. However, the, uh, the STF it has around 60 to 80 percent of caries arresting effect. So yes, uh, STF is quite more effective in caries arresting. But in the prevention, still uh, fluoride varnish is the king. Is the fluoride war? Okay, sorry, I've answered that. Uh, Wahid is asking, uh, are you going to make this available to watch later? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, I have a patient who is complaining of a sensitivity due to cracks uh, on his anterior tooth after trauma or concussion. Can I can I use STF to prevent sensitivity? Yes, if the, the, due to crack, you have exposed the internal tubules, STF will will block the staining, but keep in your mind that you are using that for the incisor. So uh, uh, expect a staining of around the around the crack area, and uh, make sure that you have uh, good informed consent before going ahead uh, with the when you use uh, on the anterior tier. Okay, how many times per year can I apply STF? The recommendation says now biannually. Uh, uh, I have a question regarding the child having nickel allergy. Is this a contraindication to use STF? Uh, we have silver in STF, so if they have silver uh, uh, allergy, then yeah, you can use it. You know, you shouldn't use it if you they have silver allergy. Okay, uh, Dr. Momin is asking, uh, you are probably aware of the silver nanoparticles and how many researchers are evaluating the addition of the silver nanoparticles to several dental materials, including dental implant surfaces and bone grafting materials. I'm treating deciduous in treating uh, deciduous teeth. What are your thoughts on how silver nanoparticles are different from silver diamond fluoride in terms of the antibacterial effect staining. Uh, there is one article actually by Zhu in Japan, and they found uh, that uh, the uh, silver nanoparticles, they are more effective in uh, sense of penetrating. So yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Momen. Uh, that's a quite uh, a good question. Uh, so yeah, nanoparticles are quite interesting topic of research now. Uh, they they have proven to be more uh, effective in in sense of penetrating deeper, uh, but still they are uh, at the research level. Uh, I'm not sure how clinically they will be effective. Uh, okay. How much is the pr the price for brace up and down and down teeth? Sorry, I didn't get. Can you show the QR code? I think it's there now. Uh, okay. Uh, where? You, okay. Uh, is there a link there, Dr. Mohammed? Because I have a couple of uh, asking. Where is the link? 
Sure, uh, Dr. Anas, uh, first I want to thank you for such excellent uh, presentation and uh, I want to thank everyone for attending uh, our first uh, Hamdan bin Muhammad uh, webinar. So uh, in this slide, I think you can see the link. So the, it says that the link for the evaluation form and also you can see the QR code on the side. And now just in the question box, I'm just resending the uh, the link for the evaluation form. So if you can have a look at the question and answer box uh, so you can uh, see the link and maybe you can access the evaluation form. So um, so once you access the evaluation form and complete the form, uh, then uh, we will register your information. Please uh, give us almost 48 hours to send you the certificates with the uh, credit hours, which is 1.5. Again, I want to thank uh, Dr. Anes. Uh, mashallah, such excellent uh, presentation as usual. And uh, and we are looking uh, forward seeing you again uh, next week on April 20th. We have a very good uh, presentation by excellent uh, presenter. Uh, the title of the presentation for, uh, for next week, Monday, it's Surgical uh, Management of Impacted Canine. It's, my, uh, it's by Dr. Abdurrahman Fiqh. And we really hope to see you again and we will uh, and we will publish the details of that presentation soon uh, thank you all and hope to to see you again thank you thank you thank you everyone thank you dr mohammed and i apologize that there are around 110 uh, questions and i'm sorry if we couldn't cover all of them and we'll see if we can uh, reply back to this uh, uh, comments after the live session uh, sure. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, Dr. Anas, if you want to share your email at the end of the box, I mean the question box, so maybe people will uh, contact you. Sure. Uh, I'll just type my email address. Okay, so thank you everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and stay safe and hopefully we'll meet up soon. And thank you, uh, Dr. Mohammed, for moderating the session. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. I'll take it off you. And uh, okay. hopefully I will just give one more minute for people to see the evaluation link and Dr. Anas email. Uh, just one more minute and inshallah we'll see you next week, Monday on April 20th for oral surgery. Uh, lecture by Dr. Abdurrahman Taufiq, and inshallah it will be a very interesting uh, lecture. Uh, thank you again. I think uh, hopefully it's enough time to for everyone to see the link uh, of, of the uh, of the evaluation form and uh, Dr. Anas uh, emails and uh, we'll see you soon inshallah. And uh, by the way, if you have any other uh, if you have any other questions regarding our uh, webinar or if you have any uh, any issue for getting the evaluation form, I will just post uh, another email. In case if you have any problem. Thank you all. As-salamu. Stay safe.